This is really exciting because it's a first look at ICOM's new linear amplifier, the ICPW2. This is a one kilowatt full duty cycle linear amplifier. Just take that on board, full duty cycle. That means it will happily run, as long as you like, at one kilowatt on FM. Uh, it will run at a kilowatt sideband, obviously, PEP or CW. Uh, if you're going to use it on AM, then you're going to have reduced power, of course, on AM. Uh, but if you're going to use it on digital modes, if you wanted to, it would run happily a kilowatt on your digital modes or RTTY or whatever. So it's a pretty impressive beast, but as you can see, not much to look at on the front except for this, which is the control panel, which you would keep attached to the linear if you were going to have the linear where you were going to be able to reach the control panel to drive it. But looking at the size of it, it's a bit of a big beast. I don't really want it on my desk. So what I'd like to do is tuck it away under the desk. And so what I can do is I press this magic button here, out pops the control head. And then we also have this very handy magnetic stand here. And uh, I, well, I think the magnets are actually on the control head. The stand is just metal and you put that there like that and there. That's all we're going to have on the desk. This we can tuck away out of the way. But before we do, let's just spin it around and have a look at the connectors. There is a positive plethora of connectors on the back of this linear, starting with six antenna connectors for a start. And we can select them individually. Uh, and we can have one radio connected to this linear, or you can have two radios connected, one in input one, one in input two, and uh, each of them could then have uh, switched to them, whichever antenna you want to select from the control panel. You can obviously only transmit one at a time. Uh, you can't transmit two radios into the linear at the same time, uh, but you could have two receivers running from it and picking which antenna they want to use and then deciding which one you want to be the transmitter and transmitting through the linear. So two connectors. And also, if you're using something like the ICOM 7610 or the ICOM 7760, you can connect to both inputs from the one radio. So we get connected up in a moment to the 7760 and we'll take the connection from antenna one and antenna two on the exciter and plug them into one and two on here. Next to it, we've got antenna in and out connectors. So from the out connector, we could connect that perhaps to an external SDR or something. We want to be careful that we don't transmit up. Um, and we've got access then to those other antennas connectors here. We could route one of them through to there. Also one marked in. Uh, and that means we could use those two together to perhaps connect uh, an external bandpass filter. Very useful in a de-expedition situation or a contest situation where you've got high power stations operating around you. Then we've got the all important connector for our control head. So that's where the lead from the control head is going to plug in here so that we can drive everything from that head and tuck the linear away under the desk. Then we've got a LAN socket here to connect your local area network. Now at the moment that will enable you to pick up time information from a time server and set the clock on the linear. And coming is a firmware update which will enable you to control the linear through the local area network or remotely, but that's not available yet. And then at the end here, we've got a uh, remote aux little socket, which you could use for giving the correct band change information out to a telescopic antenna, if you were using one of those self-adjusting antennas with the linear. Uh, when we come down to this end here, we've got band one and two, and we'll see all the way along here, because you can connect two radios, or connect one radio twice. Uh, a lot of these uh, sockets along the bottom are duplicated. So we've got band two, band one. These outputs give band information for say an external bandpass filter for band changing. Um, and then if we look here, this little row, a really important row of connectors uh, for connecting to our exciter, because first of all, we've got this one here, which is labeled remote one. And this is the one that's gonna take the CIV information from our exciter, which in this case is going to be the 7760, and it's going to um, talk to the linear and give it its information about when it's going to transmit, and also it'll pick up its band change information through this socket here, accessory one, so that is going to be connected also to our exciter, and the necessary cables to do this come with the linear. And then this one here, ALC, the automatic level control, very important when you're using a linear. Uh, and this can be used either with a, a non-ICOM exciter 
or as we're going to be with our 7760, because what this does is it gets information from the exciter or feeds back information to the exciter to make sure the output level of the exciter is not overdriving the linear and making a horrible uh, interfery, splattery signal, which nobody likes. And rather cleverly, uh, with this linear, when you're setting it up, if you're using it with the 7760, there's an automatic setup mode where you press a button and it sorts it all out for itself and makes sure that the drive is exactly correct from the exciter for the one kilowatt output. And then we've got that, that same row of connectors duplicated again in case we were going to be connecting a second radio. And then as we move along here, we've got two circuit breakers here. We hope nothing happens to those <laughs> while we're using it. Ground tag, of course, which is very important. And lastly, this is where our power plug connects. Now this linear will run from any source from 90 through to 132 volts, 50 or 60 Hertz but it will only at that power input provide 500 watts. If you want the full kilowatt, then you need to have it connected to a source that's 180 volts through to 264 volts, 50 or 60 Hertz. So if you're in the United States, you are going to need the higher voltage outlet installed in order to get the full kilowatt. Not gonna be a problem if you're in the UK or Europe. So let's get it connected up and make it play. First thing I've got to do is get it off the desk and put it under the desk and it is quite heavy. So can I have a bit of help here, please? So let's see what happens when we power up the radio. Hopefully everything should power up simultaneously. And there we go. And the great thing is that enormous great linear only needs this tiny little panel here to control all its various functions. Now, before we can use the linear, we've got to sort out the ALC settings. Fortunately, there's an automatic adjustment with the 7760, and this will make sure when we do the auto adjust that the 7760 provides just the right amount of drive and doesn't overdrive the linear and give us a horrible splattery signal. I'm actually gonna do the adjustment on the 28 megahertz band. Yeah, abs absolutely nobody there, so we're not gonna irritate anybody while we're doing our adjustments. We'll change antennas as well while we're doing this, and we can do that from here we click on input one, and you'll see here that actually when I was setting up earlier, rather than just having your antennas called one, two, and three, which is the default, I could actually add some details and a little pretty picture in the antenna memory. So it says antenna one is the G5RV, antenna two is the Hustler, uh, because that will be a little bit happier, I think, on 28 megs. So we've now switched, see, it is showing antenna two and 28 megs. Uh, but I will just make sure that uh, we, we've got the best possible SWR. So uh, if I use the tuner, I can probably trim a little bit of SWR out. Is this frequency in use? Is this frequency in use, please? Over. And you could see the power out was giving us a nice 200 watts there because we haven't got the linear switched in. So now we're ready to set up the ALC. And we click on Exciter and we click on Input 1. Now, we do have two inputs connected because we have the one radio, the 7760, which has a main and a sub connected to input one and two on the linear, but we're only gonna be transmitting through input one. So we only need to set the ALC for input one. So we're gonna press that. ALC adjustment for one kilowatt. And we press auto and up comes this message. And it says it will automatically adjust it at maximum RF power. So let's just check we have got it set for maximum RF power. I think we saw 200 watts on the meter there just now, but we can see HF 200 watts. That's our full power out. So we're ready to go there. And it does want us to do this in RTTY mode. So let's just change USB to RTTY. Now it wants us to just transmit and it should do the adjustments itself. So start transmitting. There it goes. The adjustment has been completed. Stop transmitting. Okay, now we need to step back out of all of this. Otherwise, nothing else is going to work. So we come out of that, all of those menus, and we're ready to go. We have the tuner here. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a tweak and knock all the SWR out. Now uh, I can switch on the amp. I'll take it off RTTY and put it back on upper sideband. We're ready to put a call out. Let's just turn the volume up and check there isn't anybody on that frequency. Uh, a bit of local QRM from somewhere in the house, I think, but there's not a signal to be seen. So we're not going to upset anybody with our call. Now, watch the power output meter and hopefully the SWR will be fine as well. So here we go. 
Is this frequency in use, please? Is this frequency in use? This is Golf Zero Foxtrot Golf X-Ray. Golf Zero Foxtrot Golf X-Ray G0 FGX. Testing. Going out on 28 megs. Uh, and I haven't even heard the fans really kick in on the linear either. It's very, very quiet, which is a good thing. This is Golf Zero Foxtrot Golf X-Ray. Testing. There. So we're all set up. We've got a kilowatt out. And once you set up the ALC on one band, that's it. You don't have to do it on other bands. We're all set to use the linear now. But we've always got to make sure that we've tuned up the antenna with the internal tuner and that it can tune it up to a decent SWR. If you don't do that, it will start shouting at you. Bells and whistles will happen and uh, it will go into protect mode and it won't let you use the amp and you have to switch off protect mode and start again. A good thing because it stops you from blowing it up. One other thing we can do after we set up the ALC to make sure we have a super clean signal is to go into function on the 7760 and switch on the DPD. And that's the digital pre-distortion technology, which applies that inverse distortion, uh, which then ensures great linearity in the final amplifier and a clean signal. Uh, it's quite clever how it does it, and I'm not sure I 100% understand it, but it definitely works and it's very important when you're running a kilowatt. I have made a bit of a thing about the fact that this linear has two inputs and we've got the 7760 connected into both. Uh, so that means that we can select different antennas for main and sub. And we do that through the control panel from the linear. Uh, in actual fact, we've got six to choose from, but we're just going to switch between two. So let me show you how we do that. Because when you've got the linear plugged in and you're using this controller, then your antenna connector selector on the radio doesn't work anymore. It's going to be done through here. And also we're not using the tuner on here. We're always going to be using the tuner that's built in to the linear. So let's just have a look. Uh, if we wanted to change bands here, let's change that to 14 megs. So on the main uh, receiver there, we are on 14 megs now. We could have a, a tuner around there. And what we're going to do is we're going to have that on antenna one connected to the main receiver on 14 megs. And when we just did our setup of the ALC, we've got antenna two, the Hustler, connected to the sub receiver. Now we can switch them independently. So uh, I could put this 28 back on antenna one as well, so that it's the same. So let's put the sub back, we'll click on there. That's input two and we've clicked on one. And now if you look at the display, the main receiver is showing antenna one. Uh, the sub has got a little arrow pointing back, which shows I am also on antenna one. But we might decide that we want to do our 14 megs uh, tuning around on antenna two. So we can click on there. That's input one. And we'll put the hustler on there. So now if you look at the display, the main one is on antenna two, which is the hustler. And input two is on antenna, on antenna one. So you can have the same antenna or whichever antenna you want on which main or sub receiver you want. And we've only got two antennas plugged in, but remember in terms of sockets, you've got a choice of six. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. There's lots of other menu settings that we won't go through now, but they're all detailed in the manual. And also the manual explains all the various connections, whether you've got two radios connected to it or one connected to two inputs. That's all there. It comes with all the necessary cable connections. And I should just mention there is an SD card slot on it as well. So you can save the settings of the linear onto the SD card. You can save screenshots as well. Uh, of your various screens if you want to, just as you can on the 7760. But I think the most important reason for the SD card slot is for the firmware updates. And so you can download a firmware update on your computer, put it on the SD card, put it into the linear, and then update the firmware. There we are then, a first look at the brand new IC PW2 linear amplifier from ICOM. One kilowatt, full duty cycle. It uses 65 volt LDMOS transistors. And that gives us super linearity. And then we've got that digital pre-distortion processing as well to make the signal even cleaner. You've seen us do the auto adjust on the ALC, which made it very straightforward to get the amplifier up and running. Has a built-in antenna tuner. Now, obviously that antenna tuner 
is not going to be as wide in terms of the tuning it can cope with perhaps as some external tuners you could have and that's pretty much the story isn't it with all internal antenna tuners although it will tune up on several bands on my G5 RV and with my Hustler antenna it was very happy indeed and we were easily able to get the full kilowatt out and it covers all the bands from 160 meters right through to six meters and you're going to be putting out a kilowatt and it just cruises along doing that. And of course you could run less power if you want. And uh, you'll, you'll find that maybe it runs a little bit more quietly. The fans won't kick in quite so much if you're running less power, but you've got it there if you need it. And it is also designed very much to be used in a contest situation with the ability to connect uh, an external bandpass filter if you want. And also, as we've explained, the ability to have two radios connected to it. You can have two separate radios, both sharing the antennas, although obviously only one of them can transmit through the linear at the time. So it's a very flexible linear. It's a very big and very heavy linear, which is why you can live it under the desk and just have that nice little uh, low footprint controller there. And with the 7760 next to it, what an amazing station. You've got a one kilowatt HF station and it only takes up that much room on your desktop.